we can turn this into a perfectly usable hammer. My hammer is fizzing. God, that's ferocious. It's working really well. Hi, I'm Dom, and welcome to my workshop. Hello there. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much, first of all, for joining me for another video. I've had quite a few people message me on Instagram over the years, I've got this thing, I've got this gate, I've got this old tool, I need to remove the rust, how do I do it? The honest answer is there isn't one way to do rust removal. I mean, there are various different ways, different techniques and methods, depending on what you're trying to remove the rust on. So I thought I would just do a quick tutorial to explain electrolysis, which is a fantastic process. If you're not familiar with it, prepare to have your mind blown. This is gonna literally change everything, it's awesome. Brilliant DIY project for that anyone can try at home. It's really simple to do, trust me, you need barely any equipment. It's really simple, easy to get stuff. It's not that dangerous, you've gotta be careful. There is electricity involved and water, but it's really not that dangerous, it's okay. I thought it would be really nice to just give you a real basic step-by-step -step description of how to do it. A little disclaimer, I am certainly not a scientist or a mathematician or anything else, uh, any other kind of qualifications that you would need to be a professional in doing any of this. So I'm just gonna show you the way that I do it. It works for me and I hope it works for you as well. I use it all the time and I think it's nice to share when things work well. Here's a classic example of the sorts of stuff I buy very regularly at uh, boot sales and antiques fairs and auctions and things like that. Old rusty tools. This is just junk. It's just heavy, rusty, dirty junk. But with a little bit of elbow grease and a bit of know-how, this hammer, for instance, we can turn this into a perfectly usable hammer. At the moment, the head is completely rusty and that rusted surface is not ideal when you're working with some delicate things, you want a nice, polished, fine surface. Electrolysis is gonna be brilliant for this. Wait a sec and I'll show you how to do it. First things first, all these bits are gonna get a nice, good clean. This is just hot, soapy water. And all I'm doing is just trying to remove any grease or anything like that because you don't want anything to obstruct the electrical current. Grease and dirt or anything like that. As much of that you can remove, the best. They're looking better already. Okay, tools are nice and clean. Done with the hot soapy water. What is this electrolysis lock and how does it work? First thing you're gonna need is a plastic tub. The most important thing is this needs to be plastic. Use a bucket, um, an ice cream, uh, an ice cream tub, anything plastic that doesn't conduct electricity. That is probably the most important thing to remember. Okay, sorry about that. Fill it with hot water. You don't have to use hot water. This is just something that I do like when you're cleaning anything. It doesn't have to be hot, but I think hot water works a bit better. The next thing I'm going to add to my hot water is <coughs> sodium carbonate. Now you can use various different things for this. Cleaning soda, soda crystals, things like that, not baking soda. From my experience, baking soda is a very different product. A soda crystals or cleaning soda is is what you want, which is basically sodium carbonate, which this is, you can buy this really cheap. I'm just gonna sprinkle that in. Make sure you wear gloves with this stuff because it is a cleaner at the end of the day, so it's just, it can be irritant to your skin. So just put some gloves on. And I find the, the more of that you put in, the more conductive the water gets, so the easier it is for the electrical current to pass through it. There probably is a ratio for how much of this stuff to put in there to how much water. I don't know it, I just kind of go by eye. It sort of gets to a point where it stops dissolving into the water. That's it, that's about enough. I'm gonna give that a good stir up, let that dissolve. Whilst that is all dissolving in there, let's talk about electricity. We need to make a circuit. The next thing is 12 volt car battery charger and you need to make sure you've just got the most bog standard simple battery charger you can find. You just want something that you can plug in the wall, turn it on, positive and negative. Really simple, basic as it comes. So we've got our tub that doesn't conduct electricity and our water that does. We now need to link 
positive to the negative via our rusty hammer and something else. We are going to connect the rusty hammer with, to the negative, that would be the cathode. The positive is going to become the anode. The electrical current is going to force its way out of, off of there and conduct itself to the positive, to the anode. Now, it's not abrasive, you're not sanding down or sandblasting or actually removing any of the metal. Like this file, all these little teeth, all this serrated edge, that will stay there. All it's going to do is pull the rust away from it and leave me with some nice clean metal. The anodes or the positive side are going to attract all of the rust. These are just pieces of steel. You literally can use anything made of steel for these, but they are sacrificial, so don't use anything that you want to keep, anything that is precious to you. So the rust from the tool, from the part that you're trying to remove the rust from, will be drawn to these, and that's why these look so rough now, because I've, been, I've used them before, and I've, during the electrolysis process, these end up really rusty, and eventually will just get eaten away completely. These need to be as clean as possible, so I'm gonna give these a hit with the angle grinder just to remove any of this surface rust. Four nice clean pieces of steel. Time to get them in the solution. See, I've just got these cable ties, again, not conducting electricity, they're plastic. They're gonna hold them against the edges. Depending on your setup, you can use different shape anodes. If you're using something round like a bucket and you want to submerge that to remove the rust on that, the anode could be something like an old can because it's round, it would fit perfectly around there. And the whole idea is to try and keep the positive side of the anode as close to the part that you're trying to clean as possible. The process is the same, you can adapt it for how well, however you want to do it. You can have just one anode with a positive and you could go straight onto it, that would work perfectly fine. I've got four, but only one terminal, so I somehow need to link these together. I've got these wires and this, all that's doing is linking the four anodes together. and then positive terminal from the battery charger goes onto the first one. So it come, the power comes in here, through to that one, round to that one, and then to that one. Then it's looking for somewhere and then it finds the cathode. The negative side. Now because the plastic tub does not conduct electricity, I can just clamp that to the side, it's just somewhere to hold it. And then another little wire. I'm only using these bits of wire so I don't have to put my battery charger terminals in the water and they'll get rusty and everything like that. If you keep your battery charger terminals out of the solution, they won't get damaged. Then that is gonna be connected like that. Brilliant, straight to the hammer. Have a bit of a breather. It's really simple. So far, you, can, you can't say that there's anything that's too taxing. I mean, you can find the cleaning soda crystals, the uh, sodium carbonate is what I've used. The whole setup is a battery charger, a tub, and a few wires and a few bits of old steel. You could do it on a much smaller scale. If it's something that's really small that you're trying to work on, you don't need a big massive tub and all of this stuff, the, the, you know, the four anodes. You could do it with just one. It would work just as well. I could turn that on now and it would start working and start doing its magic. But whilst I've got such a big tank and I've got this whole thing set up, I'm gonna show you a little sort of helpful tip to maximize productivity. With some other little crop clips and bits of wire, because I've got my negative terminal there, I can just extend it from there and bring and just join another wire out there and clip it onto another part. And then dump that in the source as well. When you're positioning these parts in the solution, please wear gloves, it's really important to wear gloves. Don't try not to get this stuff on your hands. Uh, the power is absolutely off at the moment as well, so that's a really good, <laughs> really good tip to avoid electrocution. Try and keep the parts that you're trying to get cleaned as close as possible to the anodes without touching it. The, the further away you pull it, the harder it is for the actual process to work, so that you're doing it a favor by keeping it as close as you can to it. The wooden handle, I'm not having to remove the wooden handle from the hammer because really it's, it's not gonna damage the wood. The wood doesn't conduct electricity. All it's doing is sitting in some warm cleaning water, which is absolutely fine. You need to clean anyway. If you've got quite a long piece like that, you can, Sometimes I find it helps to 
put one at each end. But I'm probably complicating things here. It really is simple. Just connect the neutral to one side of the part and that would work just fine. So you need to make sure the actual part, the, the thing that you're trying to clean is completely submerged under the water and keep it as close as possible to the anodes. Ready? Shall I turn it on? Here we go. Look, instantly, look at that, look. My hammer is fizzing. The file is in there, bubbling away. God, that's ferocious, it's working really well. On this charger, I've got a little gauge, so I can tell how many amps it's actually drawing, how many, like what, what current is passing through. As you leave it overnight or a good few hours, the anodes, this sort of sacrificial positive side that get the rust, the, the rust gets drawn to, they become less effective because the current can't pass through the rust and they end up work, get working worse and worse and worse. So you may have to stop after a good few hours, turn it off, most importantly, turn the power off, give those a good scrub back and give them a good clean again and then start the process again. And you'll find that it fizzes up and bubbles up a lot more ferociously at the start. It's because they start to get a little bit less effective as you go through the process. And you know what? The best thing about this process is, I can leave that now, sitting over there. You'll need to leave it for a good few hours so I can go off now, make some lunch, get on with something else and carry on in the workshop doing other things. That is gonna be fizzing away and bubbling away over there, removing all the rust. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, well that's it now. I'll leave that for a few hours, go and make myself some lunch and I'll catch up with you in a bit. It has been maybe three hours since I put these in, so probably not long enough, but I can't wait any longer. Should we have a look and see what this stuff looks like? See all those little brown flakes and chunks that are stuck all over that? Look, there's, oh, there's a couple floating around there. All those bits have come off of our rusty parts. Look at that fizzing away. It's working so well. It's looking really good. The water's looking disgusting and murky. I'm going to turn it off and have a look and see what it looks like. Wood has come up really nice actually. Right. Oh, look at that. Literally three hours, no work at all. I've just left this sitting here bubbling away. Isn't that incredible? I don't even need sandpaper or Scotch Bright or anything. This black kind of coating look comes off in my hand. But look at that. You know, buffing afterwards or wire brushing. What does that say? White House, I think. That's a nice hat, a nice hammer. How cool is that? There's not a spot of rust on it. There's a little bit on the end there. I'm not sure if that's rust. Well, it looks like blobs of solder or something. I'm not sure, but that'll come off. I've actually now got something I can definitely use. So, right, that's one good thing. This needs a bit longer. The rust was quite bad up this end. Look at that again, you can see the maker's mark there, USA. That's mad, isn't that incredible? It needs a little bit longer if I, in an ideal world. That is brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. Now this, I didn't really leave long enough. Yeah, that needs a bit more. So you can see there is still some rust on that. So that's not worked perfectly because the rust was worse on this part and I didn't leave it in there for long enough. It's actually taken off a lot of it, look. This hammer has come out the best for sure. And I'm probably more excited about actually being able to use this because it's a quite a nice little hammer. It's quite useful for a lot of little things. I think I'm gonna clean this up, dry it off, probably give it a tiny little buff on the wire wheel and I'll show you how much that's gonna transform it. Isn't that awesome? 
And you don't need to buff it. You could get the same result by scrubbing it with one of these. It'd take you a bit more time, but the same result. Look at that nice polished end. That All that mess has come off the end. It's actually a really nice hammer. Look, I gave the foil a bit of a tickle on the wire wheel, and that even came up really quite nice. But that's not bad, is it? Cool. Can't leave that handle looking like that. It's come out really nice and clean. All the grease and stuff has gone from the soapy water and the, and the warm water. But I'm just gonna give it a quick oil. That's gonna finish it off nicely. There you go. Very simple, one fully restored hammer. I really hope this helps save some of those old tools that you've all got out there in your sheds and your back gardens. Have a look around, try and find all these rusty old tools, get them out and save them. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been really good fun. Leave me some comments below if there's anything else you'd like me to show you how to do. Any more videos like this that you want to see. If you're stuck with projects or something like that, I'll happily do a tutorial and show you the way that I do these things. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Take care.